I had to make a coffee for this video. I hope you guys are ready for some arts and crafts. Recently, I made a video about this light. I absolutely love the Godox ES45. It's bi-color, it's as bright as you want it to be. It's got a remote. It's just everything I need for my setup. My complaint's not really about the light. I've been trying to find a honeycomb grid softbox attachment for it, and I can't really find one anywhere to fit this specific model. I did find one on eBay, it was $80. You can get this light for 140 bucks. That doesn't really make a lot of sense. So I'm gonna try to make one myself. Myself. So for this, we're going to need a couple of things. We're going to need some black foam. We're going to need some Velcro, hot glue gun, pencil, scissors, something to create like a straight line. I'm just going to use this level for this. I won't go into too much detail about what I'm trying to build here. Chances are you already know what it is, right? So um, but if you don't know the purpose of a soft box, um, basically is to help control the spill of the light. So if this light is facing you dead on, you think that it's just facing you, but the truth of the matter is this light is spilling out in multiple directions, right? So the idea is to create kind of like a lip and then put the grid inside and that's gonna help dim the light down. But not just that, it's also going to make it where it's hyper-focused on the subject without overspill. So I'm guessing that what I'm going to need is something roughly about three inches. We'll see how that works. Something to note is that I'm trying to leave a lip. You know, I wanna actually come and actually have it on the back here because my plan is once I wrap it and you have this space here, the actual, you know, thickness of the light, you wanna have some overhang and then we'll start the grid within the outside perimeter, if that makes any sense. We're looking at like three inches. I think that's probably plenty. So we're just gonna mark that. That looks like that's probably a good place to be. And we're gonna cut that. Now what we'll do is we'll also come up here, say about three inches, just to give us, the pencil's not gonna show up too well, but it's just to give us an idea. And it doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to kind of work and not cost $80. So just get a little line there. And you can see that it's made, if nothing else, it's made an indention. So now we know that that piece is useful and we're going to cut multiple three inch pieces. So now overlap this piece onto the next and you can start to just make a little template and get that going. Now that I have the three inch strips cut, basically what I'm gonna do is just lay this on the table. I'm gonna butt them together just like that. Get a little bit of this hot glue that's heating up over here. Just put a little bit on each edge. Then I'm gonna use this strip that I cut here, these smaller strips here. And I'm just going to put that there to basically help hold and seal it together. Now, I'm sure that you could actually just overlap it a little bit, that would be fine. But for whatever reason, I just think it would look cleaner the other way. So that's why I'm doing it that way. Arts and crafts, who knew? But I'm not paying $80 for that thing, man. I'm just not gonna do it. This is kind of the concept here. Now, I could just glue the entire thing, right? But I don't wanna do that because I can probably use some of it and, uh, you know, for the grid. One thing to note though, uh, the ES45 has four females for, uh, for your mount, desk mount, tripod mount, whatever it is. So just keep that in mind. Wherever your main mount's going to be, make sure you, you know, you, you, you cut out a little edge or something like that. It wouldn't be hard to even puncture a hole in it, but something to this effect is going to be the start of this thing. So now that I have my outer rim, basically all I'm gonna do is just make a mark here so I can let it go, right? And then we're going to grab some of this hot glue. And this one, we're just gonna lap. I'll let this be on the bottom. I don't know why I'm so like worried about aesthetics. I shouldn't be. All we're going for is functionality, right? All right, so then line that back up. Hold that for a couple seconds, let that dry. This is what I was going for, right? Nice and snug too. Like I said, you wanna leave a lip around the edge so that it can actually hold on to the housing of the light itself versus like just trying to lay flat in front of it or whatever. I want it to actually go around 
the entire light, which I think we've got it pretty good, right? So let's figure out these strips. We'll use a tape measure here. We just need a rough idea. So almost two and a half. Yeah, just like two and a half inches. So now I need to cut strips that can go across and also vertical. So horizontal and vertical to create the grid pattern. So then basically, I wanna make sure that I stay just a hair over 14 and a half, right? So uh, maybe, maybe, what is that? Maybe half an inch? Yeah, about half an inch. Half an inch on each side. And then you bend the, uh, the ends like this. And then that what we'll do is we'll glue the end and then glue it to here. And that way we can run it across. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna, I'm not gonna bore you to tears. I'm gonna go ahead and cut a few more of these strips so we can get the grid going. So I've got my strips cut, as you guys can see, and now I'm just gonna go for it. We're just gonna wing it, man. I mean, listen, if it's not perfect, that's okay, right? Isn't that okay? If it's not perfect, is it right? Well, I don't know. Who, who really knows? I mean, who really knows? Playing with glue's fun. I'm having fun. I know what I'm doing, but that's glued in. As you can see, I repeated the process, right? So I got all my horizontal pieces, but now I need the vertical pieces. And I was sitting here thinking to myself, I was like, what if I cut a little over half, right? A little over half and then just run the strips like so. That would actually give me, see what I'm saying? Like this kind of thing here, right? That would be better and faster than cutting a bunch of small pieces and trying to bend them and hot glue them in. I think that would work better. Should I try it? I think so, because I need a faster solution. Two, three, four, five. So we need five to go across. You gotta go to college for this? Feels like an engineering project, but I think I have it together here. So one in the center, then two on each side, uh, making the grid pattern will work. I believe cutting it uh, will also work, like I showed you with the uh, piece here. And that's what we're gonna run with. So I've already got this piece here done. You can see I've already got some of the cuts here. Uh, you, to kind of space it out. Now I went with like two and a quarter, two and a quarter, two and a quarter, all the way across. And then the end pieces uh, are just to basically glue to the outer perimeter of the foam. So let's cut this and then we're ready to rock and roll, baby. Overall, I think this is actually going to accomplish exactly what I was hoping that it would accomplish. So well done, I guess. Um, but we'll find out here in just a second. Bang, bang. So now, like I said, we just got to make the straps uh, to actually hold it onto the light. And that's where the Velcro comes in. And we're just going to cut some of these straps out of the foam and just use the foam. We're not getting fancy. I didn't go buy actual straps or anything like that. Same thing, we're just gonna hot glue it in place and uh, use that to hold on the grid onto the light. So 
Let's get it. So what I've done here basically is I've taken a strap, right? This obviously long enough uh, to cover the back of the light and I've glued it to the end side of the track on the perimeter. Now I'm gonna do the same thing at the top here. I'm just gonna slop on some sloppy, sloppy glue here. I don't know, I need more glue. enough for government work just gonna hold that let it dry Woo, got me i like it though it's fun it's fun playing with glue <laughs> Woo, got me again you think i learned the first time all right so then basically now all we have to do just take it uh wherever you like dead center wherever you like just like that Let's open up this uh, Velcro here. Now I bought strips, right? I bought uh, long strips. And the reason being is because I know what you're probably already thinking, like, what if you need to adjust it? Like, what if you need to make it tighter? Whatever the case is. Well, now you can, you know, just uh, pull it down so you get an idea of where it needs to go. And then uh, you can just take a piece and make sure that it's going to fit within that area. Something like here, maybe. So something like that. Boom, boom. There we go. Now I need a piece to match. Done and done. So now you know the drill. Just pull off the sticky. Good enough for government work. Same with this uh, top piece here. We just gotta get the sticky, the film off of the sticky. All right, and then just mesh that in there real good. And then just be careful pulling this because you got to remember this is art foam. This is not uh, it's not leather or nylon strapping. So be gentle. And we'll do the other side, and then that's pretty much it. So that's it. Now all we got to do is put the Godox inside. We just got to work the corners. So far, nothing's falling apart. So that's a good sign. And like I said, there's this one spot where I'm going to mount it. So let me just notch that out right quick. Done. Just make sure you don't cover the vents on the back or the light will release heat. The Velcro straps work like a charm. And voila, that's it. So now we have a honeycomb grid on top of the LED panel. Let's test it out. So this is what it looks like without the grid. And you can see that I'm overexposed. You can see a lot of light is getting spilled onto the back wall and it just doesn't look great. This shot, I've actually applied the grid to the light and you can tell that there's no overspill. There's no overexposure. And overall, I think this shot looks really good. So. I think it was totally worth it, right? Uh, the only thing I did was take it off and put it on. Take it off, put it on. There is zero light spill going on behind me right now. Um, and I think that I'm lit up pretty well. I have one more that I have to make um, to really get this thing dialed in the way I want it because now I can literally uh, turn the lights on me. If you remember in the last video I did talking about the Godox, I was talking about how instead of the lights facing me, I had to turn them really hard away from me. Uh, literally creating a a ball of light that basically illuminates me. But now I can literally turn the light dead to me and I won't get overspill on the wall. Um, if you learned anything, sub the channel, give this a like, um, and uh, drop a comment and let me know what your thoughts are. I'll see you on the next one. Take care.